Hey, yo, what? Shakur Stevenson is now alleging that top rank ESPN basically conspired against him in his final fight and paid people to leave his hometown fight in Newark, New Jersey. What? In a brand new tweet, Shakur Stevenson says, I wonder how much they paid them up ninjas to leave at the same exact time so ESPN could show it on camera crying emoji. <laughs> wow. Shakur has been on, I call it a tweet storm where he's just ranting, going crazy, crashing out on social media. He says, Tim Bradley started off saying how he truly felt on the air and the higher powers told him to switch that energy up. My boy Kriegel jumped in the ring and asked mostly negative questions because the higher powers told him to do so. Tough game, stay strong out here. And when they against you, they gonna send everybody at you to try to destroy you. They can't stop God's plan. Shakur goes on. I hate all you uck ninjas, uck y'all, eat my nuts. Catch me outside with it. What on earth is going on? I am <laughs> so confused right now with what Shakur is, is talking about. A fan says, man, Shakur Stevenson, if you were humbler, people won't expect so much from your fights, dog. You always rowdy outside the ring, so we expect the same energy inside there and you don't deliver. Good W though, it is what it is. Shakur responded to this fan and says, you ninjas can't change me. I delivered, I won, I stepped to the dude all night. Some guys just more durable than others, but I'm still the same ninja and I'm gonna stay till one of these ninjas shut me up, gang. Now, to me, this is my honest opinion because you know I don't beat around the bush. No filler. Shakur is going out bad here. When in the history of sports have you seen somebody who won, they won convincingly to the point where it wasn't a controversy? Because I've seen this only in controversies where somebody wins, but then they didn't really win. So the fans are pointing their finger. Like, let's say Oshaki Foster, he lost to Robson Conceciao and everybody says it's a robbery, right? So Conceciao, you know, if he's on Instagram, he might have to defend himself a bit because everyone feels the fight was a robbery. So in instances like that, I can understand a person winning and defending the win because at the end of the day, people don't think you won. With Shakur Stevenson, it's a bit different. The reason it's a bit different is because nobody's really disputing that he won at all. And he's going this hard. I hate y'all. Suck my da 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 da. Woo, woo, woo. And he's having to, or not having to, because I believe in choices, but he's deciding to go online and battle the fans over the win is absurd and truly insane. I told you guys before the fight, I don't mince my words. I don't st stutter. I say it. I mean it. I'm not out here stammering. I collect my thoughts when I'm making these videos. And I told you a problem. This is before the fight. The tweets are still up. Before the fight, I told you guys that Shakur Stevenson and many of these young fighters and Gen Z fighters have the same problem. Talk, 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 talk. Even one of the comments that I read from the fan was pretty much kind of saying the same thing. You're wild and rowdy outside the ring. We want to see you like that in the ring, right? This Gen Z young fighter is like some of them can't take criticism at all. So it comes across as very insecure. What Shakur is doing, I don't think is beneficial to the brand. You won. You're a millionaire. You have a beautiful family. You have a child. Why are you going back and forth online? This is just my honest, humble opinion. You know, people can like it, not like it. I don't really care. Shout out to Cam and Mace. I seen the channel was shouted out on their podcast. It is what it is. So thank you for listening to Boxing Ego. You work hard enough to the point where legends 
say your name. So shout out to Mace, shout out to Cam. Killer, Dipset. They have a great show and a great thing going. And I'm honored to be shouted out by them. And it's funny because I was shouted out regarding a Shakur because they talked about Shakur Stevenson and he pretty much said the same thing and basically was agreeing. Mace was agreeing with me when it comes to the issue of Shakur Stevenson is like you're saying all this rah, rah, rah stuff. But at the same time, your fights aren't performing like that. And I've always said this. Be who you are. That's it. No more, no less. You just got to be who you are. If you're a non puncher, then be a non puncher. Right and fight to the best of your ability. But to me, this looks bad for Shakur Stevenson that he got the W, made his millions, and he's crashing out, arguing with former fighters, active fighters, fans, just blanket statements and generic statements and saying like, oh, my style is jazz. Y'all don't appreciate jazz. And bro, nobody cares about any of that. The people have spoken. They feel how they feel about your fight. You can take the criticism. You can do what you're doing. You, I mean, he's a grown man. He can do whatever he want. But in my opinion, it's a bad look. Now he's coming out and saying that his former promoter, Bob Arum and Top Rank, paid people, paid, P-A-I-D, paid people to leave the venue. Like as if a fight like that with Artem Harutnyan takes all that. Like, listen, listen to me, listen to whoever you want. I'm keeping it real. Boxing don't want to keep it real. You have some people and content creators and people, and they're trying to make it about this and like, oh, y'all hating on Shakur. People are hating on Shakur because he's black. I don't think with this particular, and when I'm saying what I'm saying, just know I'm talking about the mass populace there's always going to be racist in the world and racist people are ignorant they're going to say stupid stuff discriminate against certain fighters but here i think that's the minority the comments that i'm seeing aren't just coming like you we're talking mace fabio foreign we're talking about boxing ego we're talking about marcus brown a fighter that's black apparently Isha smith like it's not you can't relegate this to a black thing and saying oh people are just hating on shakur because he's black there's many people that don't find shakur's output or style or the way he talks versus the performance he delivers to match up well you know and it really confuses things and this is why we got to speak on these issues is because it's a bad look because there's real true life racism. But if you point the finger and say everything is racist or racism, then it really waters down for the true to life subject matters that need to be addressed. That's why we have to be selective and call it what it is. It's just like the word hater. The word hater in today's modern society in this weak PC culture that we live in is overused. People, if you have an opinion, if you have constructive criticism, no matter how you present it, even if it's pretty gentle or if it's like me and it's brash and it's straightforward, I'm not insulting fighters. I'm not talking about their mamas and talking about them, calling them out their name and all this stuff. And people will still say it's hate. That's the society we live in. Everybody wants participation trophies and a pat on the back. We live in a very, very sensitive time where, oh, someone wrapped this lyric, this is, cancel them. You know, I'm not canceling, I'm gonna listen to it. I'm Whatever he said, I liked it. I'm not canceling, right? But that's the society we live in. And these fighters have big egos and it looks like many fighters can't take constructive criticism. There's always gonna be some hate, but we can't confuse these words like criticism when it's warranted and hate or outlining everything as racist Shakur's fight if it was fun it was fun if it was boring it was boring it don't matter what color he is what his creed is if the fight didn't entertain and here's the thing I seen videos of people leaving and some of the people were black 
You know what I mean? Not all of them, but some of them. You can watch the crowds of people leaving. So now Shakur is coming out with conspiracy theories about ESPN and top rank paid these people. And it's this consorted effort to minimalize Shakur. Yeah, it just sounds crazy, bro. And it sounds like Shakur's ego is fractured and he's just saying whatever. And that's why it's probably a great time to log off, in my honest opinion. You made your money. You got the win. You're undefeated. You're a free agent. You did it. So you don't have no ties. You're not connected to top rank if you don't want to be, right? So trying to convince people that people had to be paid off to leave and they just try to make you look bad, it just looks bad. There's no way to prove what you're saying. This is the team and the promotion that you signed to. And the reality is, well, how come Shakur receives none of the blame? And it reminds me of Ryan Garcia. Ryan Garcia has done a lot of craziness that like the discrimination, the weird, weird words he was saying and stuff. Ain't nobody rocking with that. But I do remember one thing that Ryan Garcia said regarding Shakur Stevenson. He said that Shakur is kind of like a diva. And he was talking to Keyshawn Davis. and He was like, Shakur, come here. And Shakur was like, nah, you come to me and things like that. And this attitude, he said, Shakur has always been like this since the amateurs. This behavior from Shakur makes me believe what Ryan was saying in that regard could be true about Shakur just being insanely like, like not just cocky, but like almost like pretentious or whatever. Just look at how he's acting. Like you won, bro. You got your money. You won. You're not with top rank anymore. And you're literally saying people framed you to make you look bad. The fight wasn't a great watch. It is just what it is. That's your style. It's hard to beat, you can say. Your defense looked pretty sharp. You tried to get more offensive, but the public has spoken. You're not gonna convince the people. And one thing that I want this new generation to really take home and I wanna drive home is the more you push, the more people will pull. The more you pull, the more people will push. So. Shakur trying to get online and quote, defend himself. He is very young and he doesn't see this. I'm older than Shakur. I live more life than Shakur. I know these things. He's making it harder for himself. And I said this before the fight, get the f off the internet. And I'm not saying it like I'm his dad. He can stay on the internet, do whatever is in your heart. But in my, I'm just giving you my perspective of it. My perspective is you're making it worse because it's the internet. You're not gonna convince all these people that you had a scintillating fight. Like for example, let's use Javante Davis. Javante Davis, he literally has probably put out a few tweets and none of them were really about fighting or anything, or they were real cryptic since he knocked out Frank Martin. When you have that type of outing and showing, and then you made the big bucks, did a backflip after you knocked a ninja out, right? When you're doing these things like Javante Davis, you don't have to, the work was done in the ring. There's nothing that needs to be said. Everybody got the message. Everybody got the memo. Tank knocks you out. His boxing ability is there and he's having fun in there. And then after the knockout, he going to do a backflip and tuck off the Turks and Keiko or wherever he's at right now, period. So another reason that looks bad for Shakur Stevenson is you have to get online, argue with fighters, argue with fans and justify your win. So Shakur, they contradicts himself a lot. He'll say like, oh, this is my last tweet. Then he'll tweet literally making this video. I was going to do it last night, but he was tweeting in real time as I was about to record. So I decided scratch that. I'll just wait till tomorrow because I don't know what he was literally tweeting as I was about to make the video. And I was like, this is just too much. So I was like, scratch that. I'll just do the video tomorrow. So I have all the tweets and you know, know what I want to talk about. He was literally tweeting in real time, back to back to back to back. And it was like 4 AM on East coast time in the morning. And I'm like, this man is not sleeping. You had a victory, sir. And you're tweeting till all hours of the night. And then 
I seen that he put Shakur Twitterson on his pants and he's making it like he's embracing it. But based on your activity and your attitude towards what people are saying, I don't think you enjoy that. So it's just it looked bad. It looked bad that you're trying to act like you're um, owning the Shakur Twitterson. And then you look so really affected by what people are saying. You got the victory. If you loved your performance, then you loved it. If other people didn't, it is what it is. But it, you can't really convince people. It's like a potluck at work, right? If you made the spaghetti and it looks nasty and people are going to the table with all the food and the chips and the dip and the soda and they're getting the plate and they look at that pot of spaghetti and it don't look copacetic, it look dry, it look nasty. It got some weird ingredients. It got some the wrong kind of cheese on it or whatever, or the fact that it has cheese on it. Some people ain't with that. All in all, people will decide if that food at the potluck don't look busting, that spaghetti look dry and nasty. Then guess what? People are going to see it and then look over it and be like, nah, I'll pass because it doesn't look appetizing to me. That's Shakur Stevenson's fight, you know, or recent fights. He's fighting in a style. It's effective for him. It's getting the job done. But all in all, a lot of people are looking at it as the item on the table at the potluck that just don't look that appetizing to them. And Shakur is getting online. This is just an analogy trying to convince people to eat the spaghetti. Oh, this is good, man. This is the best spaghetti you ever had. People don't want the spaghetti, bro. If they want it, I'm sure they'll put it on their plate. It's a potluck. But you can't convince people or force people to, to put the spaghetti on the plate. It's like some Ike Turner. He's like, oh, this is some good cake. Oh, you're going to eat the cake, anime. Eat the cake, eat the cake, anime, eat the cake. Like he's trying to force you to eat the spaghetti. If your style is acquired taste, it is what it is. You saying that you were framed by top rank and ESPN and arguing with fans. I just don't get it. You know, I just don't get it. And as I stated, this is what Shakur's contradictions look like. He'll say like, oh, I'm off Twitter. Y'all don't understand boxing. Y'all are casuals. Why are you berating the fans? No one's saying this about other fighters like Javante Davis. Ain't nobody looking at Carmel Moton. That man like 17 years old. Nobody's looking at Carmel Moton and saying, oh, you put me to sleep, Carmel Moton. You see what I'm saying? Styles make fights. It is what it is. But Shakur, he he seems like so big headed and he's not used to it because like as an amateur, Shakur was the one that was touted and, you know, going to the Olympics. So I think it's like Shakur is almost like a child actor. Right. And I'm not saying this to diss. I'm just being real with y'all. It's like a child actor. And he was in the Sandlot. He was in the Mighty Ducks. Right. But as he gets older, your features change, your voice change. You don't have that boyish look anymore. So you might not get cast in Hollywood the same. And some of them child actors go through depressions because they were in the Sandlot. They were in the Goonies. They were in these top movies in the 80s and 90s. And when they're no longer getting calls in the late 90s or early 2000s because they're grown men now and the Hollywood casting directors, they like them for my girl or whatever movie right then they get depressed because it's not the same and i think that's what it is shakur is not used he's used to receiving all the praise as an amateur and being the one like oh he's representing team usa and things like that so as a pro he's getting criticism for his style because his style is not the most refined pro style that's pleasing and scintillating so it looks like he has a hard time taking the criticism to be honest. And again, my, my advice is this, get off the internet. If you love it, then that's all that matters. If you you're winning and you're happy with your performance, then so be it. But trying to yell and cuss people out and say everybody's casuals and, you know, say you'll beat all these guys. Boxing is a business. You got to make statements, buddy. You got to make statements and I don't think his last two performances have generated the profile that would put him in a type of position to get a tank fight. I did, I'm being real. I don't really want to see him fight tank. I really don't. 
That's my honest opinion. He could be mad. Y'all can be mad. I don't want to see it. Like, I'll watch it. I'm a boxing fan. I'm not anti if Tank selects him or something like that. But Tank could fight Lomachenko. I think that's a better marriage of styles. And that's a very good fight. Lomachenko's accomplished. It's a bigger fight. Lomachenko's coming off a knockout win against someone who's never been knocked out. I just think it's bigger business and a better fight. And Shakur Stevenson, you know, he's just like, oh, they paid people to leave my fight. That was a bad look. I agree that ESPN showed it, but to come out with conspiracy theories, like they paid people, <laughs> like I, it's just, I never heard of that. Like you've never seen droves of people leaving a fight prematurely. And then the fighter alleges that the promoter or the network paid people and then had the interviewers asking them bad questions and negative questions and things like that. And there's just zero accountability from Shakur. He thinks it's everybody else's fault. So to each his own.